Hello everybody, it's Tommy and welcome back to another speed build for the Disney save. Today we're working on a community lot for Moonwood Mill. This is going to be Oogie Boogie's Lair. It's going to be a community lot because we decided to go the route of making it a nightclub. The idea of doing a villain's nightclub is not really a new one for the Disney save. We have quite a few at this point, although I do try to change them thematically so you can kind of get a different feel no matter where you go even if it has a similar concept. So for Oogie Boogie, thinking about his character and the types of things that he is into, it makes a lot of sense for this place to feel more like a casino. So that's sort of the direction that we went with. Luckily, you do get to see what this place actually looks like because it's also kind of a treehouse and the homes to Lock, Shock, and Barrel, who will be the next video that I'm making. Of course, after this, we'll do them and Oogie Boogie, and I'll talk a lot lot about them in their video. There's a lot of little intricacies, especially with Oogie Boogie in particular, that I'm excited to share how we kind of like worked him into Moonwood Mill. The lot is essentially this sort of tree house. The house that the kids kind of seemingly live in is up top. And then they have passageways to an underground lair of sorts. And you can also see when you're sort of approaching the lot, there is some kind of a pit that this entire tree is up against and a bridge that goes over the top of that pit. And then Oogie Boogie lives below under the ground in some kind of a lair. It's not totally clear if he's like being held captive there or if it's just his preference, but Lock, Shock, and Barrel feed him through tubes that are connected to the treehouse. They like shoot food down the tubes for him. So I always kind of interpreted it that he couldn't leave. Obviously, he's going to be roaming free around in the save. I wanted to make this place basically livable so that if your desire was more for this to be a residential and you wanted to be able to use Lock, Shock, and Barrel, you could. So the upstairs portion that has the actual house is a fully functional home. I've gone ahead and put everything in there that you would need to have those three characters living in the upstairs area, as well as like a ladder for them to get up. I still do have to play test it and see how the trees, the tree will affect the actual gameplay functionality. It's been a long time since I've used this particular tree to try to do a tree house, which I really like this tree because it's very wide and thick and it has lots of extra branches kind of coming off and there aren't a lot of leaves on it so it really really fits well for a Nightmare Before Christmas build but it also works because it has all these extra branches so it feels like it could really support something of this kind but I'm not sure if the branches will affect Sims being able to move around. They do affect visually just a little bit because when you zoom in and out it sort of like comes and goes depending on how close you are to the house and I will say my first priority was really making this a commercial lot. It's a nightclub at the end of the day and I know people are going to want to use it as a residential so I typically do try to have that functionality there for people to be able to change it if they want to but I'm not like if I can't get it to work 100% I'll let you guys know on the save file download. I think I should be able to and like I said everything is there for you to be able to use it so Fingers crossed we'll be able to get it to work. The home had quite a bit more color to it than some of the other ones that we've done and it's seemingly further distanced from the rest of the Halloween town which really worked out when planning this world because this is the lot that's way up in the top northern corner. One of the very last ones like at the top of the map. The big final one at the bottom I'm saving for the last build for this world. You could probably guess what it's going to be and it's also very conveniently the 100th build for the save file. It feels like I've built so much more than that, but it Honestly, what it comes down to is that it's the 100th build. I've probably built a little bit more than 100 at this point because I have done other things like extra replacement lots or redoing entire lots multiple times. But according to YouTube at least, and I do sort of like put them out numerically so people can see the progress, it will be the 100th build. I'm really excited. It's a big one. It's the last one for this world. So we will shortly be moving on to the next world after this. My page Patrons are currently picking what is going to be the next world. I have a pretty good idea what will end up winning, but I'm not going to say, of course. I've also been surprised before, like I'm really sure that something's going to win and then something else takes over at the last second. I have kind of two groups of people within my Patreon family. There are people who are join my Discord and are really, really active on my Discord. And then there are people that pledge to Patreon and don't really join the Discord and just sort of stay active on Patreon 
down instead, which is great either way, whatever your preference may be. It might be, you know, you like one service more than the other, or maybe you don't want to be a part of a Discord. I totally understand that. Sometimes they're even a little bit overwhelming for me at times, or some people maybe just don't have Discord. They really prefer Patreon. So sometimes even though I tend to hear more opinions from my Patreon Discord channel, I get different results when I put my polls and my options up on Patreon because there's more people kind of like silently lurking. And again, I totally get that. I think that would be me in this scenario. If someone else was making the save file and I was just sort of like watching, I was a patron, I was supporting in that sort of way, I probably would do it more kind of like passively, quietly, just vote in polls here and there and keep an eye on what's going on. So even though I have kind of an idea of what's going to win, there is no telling for sure until the polls are all done. I'm really excited, of course, to be moving on to a new world, but there will be other things coming out before we start that new new world. I'm planning on, hopefully, fingers crossed, things are still kind of trucking along. I'm currently working on the new Disney save, a new downloadable version with all up-to-date, complete worlds, characters. Everything is getting overhauled and revamped. All of the characters are getting looked at, updated. Everything that I have skipped because of various updates to The Sims, like lifestyles, likes and dislikes, ceilings, different traits and characteristics for Sims that have been added along the way. I'm finally going back and updating all of the characters way back from the first world all up until current, replay testing every single house to make sure that it's still working, and just looking over everything and making sure I didn't miss anything, updating builds with new packs, things like that. It is a ton of work. I've basically reset the save file, like the new one that's going to be out for download is a brand new one. I completely started from scratch and I've been slowly building everything back up, putting everything back in, tooling things back into place the way that they're supposed to look, adding all the relationships and jobs and everything back in. I will probably never do this again. Like my idea and my thought is that if I can do this so flawlessly this time, I hopefully will never have to start from scratch again because it is a lengthy and detailed process and I'm trying not to miss anything so that I don't have to go back and add something to a list of things that I like seemingly have to do to fix things, you know, per the Sims. And of course, we'll still get updates and things that will change characteristics, traits, whatever. And so those over time will still need to be changed, but there's been so many little UI and personality sort of additions to The Sims since the last time that I put out a save file that there was so much, I ended up just feeling like I really needed to wait and do it all together. And then like I've mentioned, sometimes The Sims will put out patches and it breaks the game for an extended period of time or it makes things unusable and it's really, really problematic when trying to create a save file. So I had just avoided basically up updating the save because I felt like every time I put out a new version of the save, The Sims would put out something game-changing or game-breaking within a couple of days and I would just feel like all of my effort was for nothing. I'm not saying I'm necessarily going to be updating the save from this point out for every future world that we complete. That is kind of the mindset going forward, but I'm not saying that that's a guarantee, especially when we do these smaller worlds like Moonwood Mill. I could definitely see stacking this world alongside another one before I decided to go ahead and update fully. But regardless, it has been way too long since I've put out the last version and there's a lot of builds that are not on the gallery and a lot of you ask me all the time and I don't really have a great answer for it other than just wait till I upload it to the gallery and hopefully it'll be available soon and soon kind of always like falls away from me. So I'm really making an effort to try to get this updated for the next set of videos that'll be coming out before we do the new world. That would mean that we'll do like a tour video for Moonwood Mill and I don't believe I've done a tour video for Sulani. So I have to do both of those and then we'll drop the new version of the save and kind of go over everything, all the changes. I've done a lot. Let me know if you want to see like a super long tour video of all the changes. And I don't mean everything because when I say I've literally gone through every single house, I mean it. So to sit there and like show you every single little change that I've done, it would be literally impossible. I won't even remember every single shelf and book and everything that I've moved, but I can go and show like the highlights, especially some of those older worlds like Willow Creek that I've done several years ago now. I did a lot of changes to Willow Creek, some additions to 
families traits entire characters look slightly different some characters have been removed and to make that all into a video it would be a really long one I don't usually like putting out super super long videos but if you guys want to see that let me know if you're more in like the just kind of show the save file do like a light tour video of the changes maybe not super long let me know as well I'm really curious what you guys want to see so that I can kind of work from there now for Oogie Boogie's lair this downstairs area again we're working with a nightclub that's underground I've done something like this recently similarly in Sulani when I did the pirates nightclub I was able to put most of that underground so it leaves me a lot of free will and able to like completely transform the space into whatever I really need it to be however the difference being this time I did have some reference to go off of you do get to see Oogie's lair and it changes when he's singing his song down here it sort of like morphs into whatever he needs it to be for the song and the colors shift there's like different points in it where it looks very much like the rest of Nightmare Before Christmas it has this like dull vibe to it everything's gray browns blacks kind of lifeless almost like black and white ish and then sometimes it goes into like this casino nighttime glowy mode lots of crazy skeletons glowing objects I really decided I wanted to lean more into the neon glowy aspect just because when I think of Oogie Boogie that's more kind of what I think of and I think it's something that represents his character very well along with the ideas of doing not just like a nightclub obviously that's what the law is because that is what is available as an option in the sims we don't have like a casino lot type but doing more so a place that's focused on playing games and have it just be like an overwhelming glowing casino my fiance came up with the name calling it snake eyes casino i really really love it i'm trying to get away from the idea of calling everything blanks location there's some places that you have to do this and i feel like it's totally appropriate for example gaston's tavern will always be called that very iconic i believe in the film or in Disney media in general it's referenced to be like this is the name of that place that's what it's canonly called per the film but then you have all these locations that you end up just calling it that because there's no other name so we have like Snow White's Cottage Rapunzel's Tower and I'm trying to lean away from just calling everything the character's location so Oogie Boogie's lair was not really what I wanted to go for for this really happy to go with something else and I think it really fits so the way that this place is kind of designed is that it's still his lair and it has all of the aspects of the original lair with the like cave walls and the brick and the darkness especially in the center and on the upper floor where you actually first enter in but then it has all of these little offshoot rooms that are completely neon glowing almost overwhelming in like a chaotic sort of way very similar to his song like you're stepping in to the different moments of his song and have all these bright lights flashing and then you can kind of come back to the center room where it's a little bit more calm and each one is featuring games of some kind so I've used the arcade machines we have like actual games you can sit down and play the sabak game from Star Wars chess poker of some kind there's one that's also a dance floor and then there's some bathrooms and things that shoot off I'm really sorry for the weird cuts and footage it feels like it kind of went from night to day there as far as the decoration goes and it's because it truly did I ended up accidentally and I have never done this before but I accidentally screen recorded my screen instead of the game and you would think that that wouldn't be detrimental but it makes the footage look like just very low quality unusable and I had to redo part of the build I deleted a couple of the rooms turned the filming back on and started recording and redoing the spaces that I had already done just so you could get a vibe of some of the things in the build because I really I recorded for almost an hour straight and was really happy happy with the direction of everything and all that footage was lost so other than just like completely redoing everything which I wasn't too keen to do because I kind of was liking the way everything was turning out I decided I would delete some rooms and recreate them and then replace the original rooms that were there so you could kind of get the vibe of what we're going for here unfortunately we don't have a lot of like specifically dedicated casino style items no roulette tables no dice chips no slot machines and not really a lot of options as far as like game machines go. The 
arcade machines are as close as it gets and they're a very large object that comes in a couple of different color swatches which I think changes the game that you're playing but I'm not totally sure and not much else outside of that. There are other sort of like virtual games that are in the catalog of build but I didn't want to use those. That's not really the vibe in here. I was looking for more like slots and even just general decor. There's this giant Russian roulette table in the center and that's sort of the vibe that this whole place embodies and he also has a huge eight ball like a magic eight ball hanging from a chain on the ceiling over the roulette table. It's the same table that he puts Santa Claus on so that he can like basically there's like some kind of a pit in the center. It's a some sort of torturous contraption that he uses and I did a couple variations where I recreated this table but it was very chaotic in a way that you couldn't even like look at it and distinguish really what it was. So I ended up coming with this version of it with the not eight ball but one of the horse balls hanging over the top and a metal table kind of turned with tools slanted in to the middle so that you still get the pit vibe and the, the more torturous aspects of this place as well because although I was going like neon casino with it I still had to think about Oogie Boogie and like the torture and skeletons, bugs, grossness, weird creatures, weird mechanical instruments sort of around. He's a really nasty dude so we had to keep some of those things around as decor. I tried to use skeletons like stuck to things. That's very much his vibe as well. He had some stuck and trapped in various game machines and game wheels on the wall so I put one of those behind the bar. So it's like a, it's a combination of a lot of really weird ideas in here. It makes it very unique though. I was originally really hesitant to lean into these glowy objects especially these walls and floor tiles. They come from the spa day pack and I haven't really used them too much in the Disney save. I was kind of saving them for Wreck-It Ralph because there's a lot of things I feel like in that direction that I can easily kind of like go with this like more glowy appeal for video game related purposes but I wasn't really expecting to use it in a build for Nightmare Before Christmas and I'm glad I leaned into it because once it all came together and it has like this dungeon creepy aspect to it but then the pops of neon it's very unique and it makes it like such a gem in this world. When you look at the overhead map of like all of the builds that are for this world, it's so similar in a good way. It makes it feel like a very cohesive sort of town, which is definitely what I was going for. And even when you look at it, the top of this is Lock, Shock, and Barrel's treehouse. So again, it looks very similar. The whole thing, the whole map looks like all builds that come from one movie, which is great because that's exactly what we were doing. But then you go underground and there's something just completely different down there. I love how it turned out. Hopefully you guys do too. It's a lot, but I think that you guys are hopefully gonna like it. It's a good change for the Nightmare Before Christmas characters too. Like I can picture a lot of them coming here and it's gonna be really fun. To round out the video, I did wanna include the decoration of some of the treehouse upstairs for Lock, Shock, and Barrel. They had to have the bathtub in the middle of their living room. It makes complete perfect sense. And then I just wanted to include like the basics and make it a little shabby. I don't think that they would take too great of care of their actual living environment and also their children. So that's something you have to sort of think about too because when I make them, I'm not gonna be making them any kind of a parent. So if you did want them to live here, you could do Oogie Boogie, although it's not gonna work out as easily as you think uh, for a reason that I'll explain in the Create Sim video. And the house is really only designed for the three of them. So it, it's kind of a shame that we can't just make it an option to let children Sims live by themselves. I feel like that's an element to the Sims that is sort of lost in the Sims 4, just this complete creative control and there's rules set in place for things like that. Like you really got to think about it. For a while I didn't even know if I would be able to properly make the Peter Pan household because I wasn't sure that you could have teens living with a bunch of children. Turns out you can, which is great, but there would also be like a really great storytelling reason to do just a bunch of children together and I think the game should allow us to have those kinds of freedoms. I don't see why we should be kind of like restricted to not being able to make those choices, but regardless, what I mean to say is they don't have a parent. So if you're going to make them live here, you're going to be having to make one for yourself. You could use Oogie Boogie, but I would not recommend that. I'm really excited for you to see how they turned out as characters. They're really fun and they're like nasty little children, which is something I don't get to make a lot of in the save file. So I'm excited to finally do something a little bit different for kids. There will be a few other characters in that video and that will sort of round out all of the Nightmare Before Christmas characters. After the last build. We'll be moving on to two final movies for the world, but they're just going to be creative sims because they are townies. And then that's it. Well, hopefully I'll be on track, hopefully with my schedule and everything to move on to showcasing the rest of the save file and then getting the new version of it out for 
download. I'm aiming for like mid to late November, but I also want to remind you guys I'm getting married at the end of November. So my wedding is fastly approaching and it definitely comes first. I'm taking some time off right around then. So whatever ends up happening first will work out how my schedule actually works out. I'll keep you guys updated. And that's pretty much gonna be the end of today's video. If you would like to support the Disney Save on Patreon, you can do so by clicking the link in my description box down below or the one at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys all in the next one.